Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Maya and this is Inspired by Maya. So in today's video, I'm going to be making some flares. Now I have made some flares on my channel before, but they're stretchy and these ones are going to be made from a woven fabric. I haven't included a pin tuck like the previous ones, but I think ironing a crease in them down the center of the leg would look really sleek. I'm planning to wear these to work because I recently got acrylic paint on my old work pants and they got ruined, but to be fair, they did have their run. I've had them since second school so they were showing signs of wear and tear but anyways i do love me a good flare and i don't have any in a style that's suitable for my working environment so here we are i'm using a black suit and fabric that fabric works best for the formal style and fit that i'm going for but you can make it a medium weight cotton for a more laid back casual look this pattern is available on my etsy store as usual catering for my tall petite regular and curvier girlies but yeah that's enough talking so let's get on with the tutorial so because I've shown you how to assemble these pants already on my channel, I'm going to skim over that and give you more tips and tricks on how to get your garment looking immaculate. So the first thing I do is pin my pattern to the fabric and trace around it with chalk. When I cut it out, you can probably see a bit of fabric peeking out at the hip area. That's because I had to make a few adjustments to the pattern around the hip area, but all of that's been edited in the final pattern. Once that's done, I overlock the side seam of the pant legs, the crotch seam and the entire waist face except for the top. Then give your fabric an iron to get any of the creases out. Really and truly this should be the first step you do before cutting out your fabric because it eliminates puckering and accidentally adding extra fabric into the garment. Once I overlocked those pieces I took the center front seams, pinned them right sides facing and sewed with a straight stitch. Make sure you're using the correct needle for your fabric and that you back stitch at the start and end. Then press this seam open with the iron. Now let's do the side seam of the waist facing. Again, sew right sides facing and iron, but you have the choice afterwards to add some detailing. So I decided to top stitch each side of the side seam, which not only creates a nice detailing, but also makes my seam allowance lie flat. I also added my label in. I just changed the top thread to white since my label is white and I didn't want a contrasting colour on top. Now that's where I finished with my facing, but if you want a proper class finish, you could bias bind the edge maybe with a black satin, which would look so good. If you do decide to overlock like me, I'd recommend overlocking the bottom of the waist facing at this point instead of how I did earlier just because it's like another security stitch on the side seams, they won't come undone easily. Once the facing is complete, we can set it aside and move on to the invisible zipper. For this step, you want to use an iron on the warm setting, not hot, so that we don't melt the zipper, and just iron the teeth open. This will just allow the needle to get as close to the teeth when sewing for a truly invisible zipper. To make sure my zipper lines up properly when I'm sewing, I mark one centimeter in on my center back seams on the right side of the fabric, and then I just extend the line a bit wider than the zip so that I can see it when I move to the sew machine. I like to pin the top of the zipper where the stopper is to the mark that we made, and make sure you're pinning the side which has the zipper teeth furthest from the edge of the crotch seam. I personally don't pin the whole length now, I just use one pin to hold the top in place and position the rest myself when I'm sewing, but only do that if you feel confident. On your sewing machine, we need to change the foot to an invisible zipper foot, which has two ridges underneath which allow the zipper teeth to slot into. If they aren't in the ridges when you're sewing, there's a strong chance that the sewing machine is sewing through the zipper and you'll have to unpick it all and do it again, so make sure that everything is correct when you start. Once that stitch has been made, we can do the exact same for the other side. Now we can close up the centre back. You'll need to change your foot to a zipper foot for this. So just fold the back of the pants in half, right sides facing, and sew the crotch seam together. I like to start from the bottom and work my way up to the zip. So you want to sew with a straight stitch and your normal seam allowance. And then as you approach the zip, you want to stay close to the zipper seam we made earlier. The closer you are, the more seamless it will look when we open it out. The further away you are, you'll have a bit of a pocket when you open it out. And it's not that noticeable, but it should be avoided. Now that the zipper is complete, we can piece the side seams and crotch seams together. Take the front and back of your pant, 
Place them right sides facing and sew with a straight stitch. Don't forget to change your foot back to a normal foot as well. I also want to mention that you might want to use a walking foot if you're using a fabric similar to mine just because it can tend to pucker if you don't hold it taut and the walking foot will eliminate that. Also, when I'm sewing side seams, I think it's best to start from the bottom of the garment and work your way up to the top because too many times I've started the other way around and my side seams become mismatched due to the ease not being distributed evenly. For some reason, it's just better starting from the bottom. Then when I reach midway up the seam, I tend to pin the top down a bit just to make sure everything's going well and then continue. Now for the crotch seam, again start from the bottom and work your way up. For the centre of the crotch seam, pin them together in advance and the trick to lining them up is to pin right in the middle of the seam. Make sure it's going through the centre on both sides and then pin down slightly on both sides of the crotch seam. Also, don't forget to remove the pins when you approach it as sewing because this is quite a curvy seam and sometimes we don't put the pins in straight and if they are at an angle, the machine will fight them when you're sewing. For me personally, when I reach the centre of the crotch, I carry on down to the bottom but but if you're nervous about the ease not matching up, you can backstitch at the crotch, flip the trousers over and start sewing from the bottom to connect back with that seam. I hope that all made sense. Now we can move on to the waist facing again. So to attach it to the waist, I like to pin the side seams together first with the same method I mentioned earlier, pinning through the middle of the seams on both sides. Then I match the ends with the zipper tape, fold out the zipper and pin the edges together. Then just pin the rest of the waist to the waist facing. Once that's done, we're gonna change our foot to a zipper foot again and sew close to the zipper teeth and pivot stitch on the corner. Continue doing a normal straight stitch and then pivot stitch again and back down to the other side of the zip. Don't forget to backstitch. Once that's done, we can carefully snip the corner. Don't snip too close to the stitches or the fabric will unravel and our seam will have nothing to hold on to. Then fold it out and push the zipper out. I just use my nails but you can use something with a not too sharp but defined edge. Now we need to top stitch the seam allowance to the facing. So just open up the facing so it's somewhat flat and finger press the seam allowance to the facing, not the garment. You could also use an iron to do this step I would definitely recommend you to um, especially if you are using a type of cotton. Then I kept my zipper foot on and just extended the length of my zip slightly and sewed about two to three millimeters away from the seam. Once that's done, we need to tack the facing down. So I did the seam pinning method again, pinning through the middle, matching side seam to side seam. And because we're gonna be doing a stitch in a ditch, we need to change the pin direction so it's horizontal instead of vertical. So once you've done the vertical pinning, we need to pin horizontally and then remove the vertical pinning. If done correctly, a stitch in the ditch should be invisible and it's where you sew right in the center of the seam. So that's what we're going to be doing on the side seams and the center front seam. Now for the absolute last step, it's hemming. So for my pants, I wanted to have a clean finish. Since the waist has no visible top stitching, I wanted the same for the bottom. At first, I thought I was overly generous with my seam allowance because I used four centimeters. But when I think about it, it actually makes the most sense because it makes the bottom of the leg heavier causing the flare to hold its shape and drop nicely around the ankle so i marked my four centimeter line faintly with taylor's chalk folded the fabric up to this line pinned and ironed it in place and then i took something called hemming web which is essentially a strip of glue activated by heat i just used it to hold my hem in place it's very easy to use because the glue melts fast i just sandwiched it between my hem ironed it and then moved on to hand stitching this was made a breeze because the hem was already intact and i did my stitch is just about an under an inch apart and every once in a while you have to have a stitch coming through the top of the pant but if you are using the same color thread as your fabric you won't be able to notice but yeah that's how i finish my hem but you can choose to top stitch bias bind whatever your heart fancies but yeah that's the full run through on my personal opinion on the best way to assemble these flares so let's go on to the final reveal Japan. <laughs>